This is Let's Talk Business with your host, Mark Ebinger. Now, here's Mark. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Business podcast. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk about the latest updates made to the Google Business Profile platform. They're always doing something over there. And some tip, tips on optimizing your profile. We're also going to talk about how Google Gemini is going to have a huge impact on how customers are going to choose which local businesses to do with. This has got me like, I'm actually super excited about what they're doing here because I think it's a good thing. But of course, it's Google, so they're probably going to make it good for them and bad for business. But at any rate, in studio with us today is Billy Scott, owner of Grow Marketing, a company that specializes in web design, Google ads, and search engine optimization. Billy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's my first podcast, so I'm excited. Awesome. All right. We went ahead and let him on because he was at our event this past week. So he showed up. <laughs> yes. That's how it works. Uh-huh. All right. So yeah. the rules change. It's called the buy-in, yeah. Yeah. I like it. Did you have a good time at the event, by the way? Yeah, it was great. It was my first time going. It was really nice. There was so many people there. Yeah, yeah and, and business getting done, too. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So I'm your host, Mark Evinger, the owner of Krukus Virtual Staffing, a company that recruits and staffs experienced overseas administrative assistance for insurance agents who need help with policy management, claims processing, and client communication. So if you're serious about the most, or if you're curious, not necessarily serious, but you can be serious and curious at the same okay. time, about the most common tasks that virtual assistants are doing for their businesses, head over to our website at crucus.com and grab our list of the top 20 tasks that VAs are doing for businesses just like yours. The link is in the podcast description below. And I'm your co-host, Genevieve Sims, with The Evolve Firm, where we help business owners create marketing strategies to help evolve and elevate their business. And I'm Howie Nestel, the owner of Sharkmatic Advertising an ad agency that specifically works on web design and search engine optimization plus influence marketing to help get more prospects to become clients. So I love working with agencies like the Evolve Firm and collaborating to take these clients to the next level. Yeah, influence peddling, influence marketing. Right. Did you coin those terms? I, I will now. You will. <laughs> Copyright <laughs> Batman. I, don't, I like saying that. I don't know. Did you ever watch Lego Batman? Yes. Yes. That's, that's where funny. I got that from. Yeah. Copyright I Batman. did watch Lego Batman I, at the theater. Oh, really? Yeah. I went out Back to the, the theater day. and bought and, and watched it. And I thought it was awesome. Yeah. I've seen it a few times. I love the little, just little things, you know, little quotes that are snuck yeah, in there. Yeah. Well, They're it's awesome. for adults and for kids, right? It's got Absolutely. two levels on the Best there, yeah. kind. All right. A quick reminder to follow the Let's Talk Business podcast on all major podcast platforms and social media where you can catch video versions of the show. You can get to everything easily from our website at satalkradio.com, which I need to update, take down that event. Uh, I think our next one's going to, we're going to try and do it in May of next year, but okay. we'll see. I'm going to go to a bigger location, I think. I think um, I need to. <laughs> yeah. So instead of taking it down, let's make an update, say May 2024, uh, mm -hmm. May 2025, location TBD to be determined, and at least it stays up there and the algorithm can continue to index it. Yeah, well, listen to the search engine optimization yeah, people. That's all right, so just a quick recap on our mixer. We had uh, about 250 attendees there on site. Uh, I know there's a lots of businesses and connections. The uh, vendor booths are one of my favorite things about a mixer because I think it really kind of opens up the conversation, um, plus gives an opportunity to other businesses to get themselves and their message and their offers in front of people that are mixing and mingling. So right. it kind of loosens everything up. Uh, what are your thoughts there, Howie? The attendees, the 250 people attendees, were the right people there. And the reason I say that is because I've been to a lot of conferences and expos, and sometimes the, the sponsor booths are empty and people don't go up to them. What that tells me, that has nothing to do with the sponsor or the, or, or the participant. It has more to do with the attendee that is not really there to do business. And so I think we had the right people in the room because of that reason. Every sponsor table had somebody, a business owner, that was an attendee of the, of the um, Mega Mixer at the table at some point, and they're talking, and they were talking directly to the owners. That also helps. Great point to have the owners of the businesses of the gold sponsors there because then they get to talk to the owner. I like that too. Genevieve, what would you think? That was absolutely fantastic to have the vendors there. The sponsors have their tables. Um, like how we said, every time I passed by those tables, they were always full of people. So people there 
came with the expectation to collaborate with our sponsors, which is very encouraging. That means we're on the right path. We're doing the right thing here, creating a platform for this collaboration to happen. So I'm very proud to have been part of that. I was so happy to see everybody walking around with all the swag to know that they have visited every table and um, just to see everybody really engaging with each other. I rarely saw anybody standing on the side by themselves. I had a client there who has seen our podcast and said, hey, how do I get on the podcast? And more importantly, would you mind sharing with me how to create a podcast and make it as successful as a Let's Talk Business podcast? And I said, well, I can't help you with that, but I can introduce you to somebody who owns a podcast studio where we actually shoot our. So I walked them over to Matt. I go, now this guy can help you do most of what you said. And so then I left them talking. So it's very nice to have the owners there. Yeah, I was happy to have Matt there as well. Um, Bill, yeah, what would you think? Those vendor booths were awesome too. I actually had to stand in line a couple of times to get to talk to them because there were so many people and there was so much like networking going on. And, and so it was, I kind of was jealous that I didn't have a booth, but that was my first time there. So maybe <laughs> next time. Next time. You know, it's interesting how everything is kind of unfolded because I certainly can't take credit for everything that's happening at those events, but it just seems like a perfect hodgepodge of ideas and stuff come together and it does work. Um, sometimes yeah. it's that, it's that intangible thing that's happening there. Yeah, But it's quite... not, it's not luck. What it is, is you, you've been doing the podcast now for two and a half, three years, mm -hmm. something like that. And you've made adjustments and you've adapted to things that change in the marketplace. You've also doubled down on the things that have worked and you're doing things right. And when you're not, you're adjusting or adapting to it. And so eventually these small accomplishments over large periods of time produce dramatic results. And that's where we are now. But of course, to the outside person, it's going to look like, oh my God, these people are just so lucky. They put up some event <laughs> and then a bunch of people show up, but it's not that. No, there's a lot and there's of work a, that right. goes behind this event and getting people to show up and getting the sponsors. And we had to turn some sponsors away because we just ran out of room. It's one of the reasons why we need to go to a, a different venue. But yeah, we're always looking to improve things. Um, and I've got some cool ideas for the next one too that uh, will ramp up our marketing just a little bit, I think, as well. So, all right, awesome. Love all that. Uh, the red carpet interviews, I think, went really well. You guys did a fantastic job. I actually did a couple of them this time as well, just kind of get the ball rolling on that. Um, uh, but would you think, Genevieve, of the uh, red carpet interviews? Oh, Allison did an incredible job, as always, with Indigo Productions being so um, just being able to direct us on how to do it properly and then having all these business owners, especially our gold sponsors, being able to give them that platform to talk about their company. They were so excited. I think it always adds that elevated um, feel to our events, which is very different when you go to other networking events. They don't have that opportunity to promote their company on a red carpet. So it definitely brings us up there. Some of the some of the savvy business owners that were not gold sponsors, they got in line right away I for know. their interviews. I was like, I'm like, oh. wait a second, are you a gold sponsor? <laughs> so I'm interviewing them anyway. But then when I saw right. a gold sponsor, I was I'm sorry, we gotta move them to the front of the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well that was the whole point. So uh yeah, I mean as long as Allison and Jen from Indigo Film Pro are willing to do that, they they have the time to do it. I think they were doing them until six thirty and then that was gonna be it. It puts prospects in front of them that get to see their work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not just signing up for an email newsletter. They're signing up to get a copy of that interview from this company that edited it, and now they're connected to Indigo. So, I mean, you talk about, i I rather donate my time if I was a video production company and be there and do that for 100 business owners than pay for Google Ads. Oh, for sure. Like that segue about Google? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a great segue. Yes, I do making sure the cameras all got it. Not but. only that, but then <laughs> then run them themselves. Indigo Films should be actually posting those themselves. Correct, and then mm -hmm. and then tagging those companies or collaborating and, then, and collaborating. Right, yeah. collaborating. I learned that from <laughs> Mark Evans. Uh, anyway, and then and then there there's a relationship. Yeah, for sure. And there's some loyalty that goes there. So that no like and trust factor is high and all that. It's a good opportunity. I, I love that they come out and they've been supporting us every time we. We've been doing that. And then, of course, Matt Roberts with Matt Roberts Photography. Mm -hmm. Love that guy. Uh, his his skills are extremely high. For any business that's looking to, you know, get photography, headshot photography, 
or legacy photography done, you definitely need. Yeah, to I was up out. on his website looking at some of the portraits and the oh, the, the headshots. Very good, great work. Wow. Even made you look good, which is like <laughs> wow, <laughs> like close to miracle status right there. <laughs> He's a miracle worker. That says a That's lot, a, then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Billy Scott, so Grow Marketing, uh, tell me a little bit of background on you and then how you got into Grow Marketing. I know it's your guys' company. Yeah. Uh, is it something you started? Is it a franchise? Just give me the background there. Yeah, no, it's something we, we started. I'll give you the, the long, short story. Uh, is I started as a door-to-door salesman because I just needed a job. Uh, went to a dry cleaners and needed to pick up and delivery service that they were starting. I was going to be a driver just because, hey, it was a job. And the owner said, I bet you'd be a good salesperson. I never sold a thing in my life. So just had me go knock on doors, and turns out I was good at it. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I was there for about six years. We grow it. We grew it to like 1,500 customers or so. Um, and at the time, the owner, he just didn't want to expand anymore, and that's all I did was just expand. And he says, I- I'm happy. He was making enough. Uh, so I saw the writing on the wall, and I thought, well, what am I going to do next? So... I realized I liked growing business. I liked helping. And so I said, well, maybe I could take my sales experience and see if I could correlate that with the online world. So while I was working there, I started taking classes, uh, started trying to understand the online world more, eventually quit, uh, and then went back to that cleaners and they became my first client. Uh, so that's kind of, it's just interesting how one thing leads to the to the next. But uh, door-to-door sales, I feel like is kind of my secret weapon that I enjoy because I mean being honest I I doubt people like door-to-door salespeople. I don't know how you feel about them but. not at my door <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them at my door I don't mind them at other people's doors yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly so, I, I really don't mind as much it's, it I won't answer the door if I'm busy doing something or if I don't want to talk to them but I, I don't like hate on them or anything yeah I, I think that's what I learned so much from it because majority of people already aren't happy that you're there and within 30 to 60 seconds you have to make them like you trust you and be able to convince them that they need the service that you're selling all within such a short amount of time. So I was like, yeah. And, but then I ended up loving it. So realizing, well, that's kind of how the internet works too. They go to a website and you have to, within a short period of time, make them like you, trust you, and hopefully need the service that you need. So I, it, it seemed like a natural segue. So we jumped in and been loving it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. So my wife and I started it. Now we have about a team of seven that that's helping us. So Cool. Are they local or are they are you using VAs from overseas? Uh, we have a couple local and then some other VAs overseas. So, nice. yeah, mostly the, the couple that we have local, we have like a, a project manager and, and a sales guy that helps here just because it's, you know, having that face to face is nice. But then a lot of the behind the scenes work, we have the, the VAs to be able to help us. Are you guys, are you networking? How are you marketing? What's your primary thing? Or is it Google ads? I mean, <laughs> how are you doing it? Yeah, I this is going to sound very... Uh, hypocritical of me, but all of our work comes through referrals uh, at this point. That's exactly how we've grown. For uh, last year, we've been able to scale, but before that, we actually had like a three-month waiting list of clients just because we hadn't grown yet. So it worked out just because apparently when you tell people you have a waiting list to join, they seem to go ahead and say, okay, hey, let me jump on. I'm taking that yeah. immediately. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've still tried to kind of have that to an extent, but at the same time scale to where we can have a, you know more turnover to be able to help more clients. But all of it just comes through referrals. I should do marketing myself since that's what I'm doing. So we're eventually yeah. trying, but I don't want to be able to do that until we have more of the team to be able to do that because we still have been able to have a little bit of a, a waiting list at least. As of waiting now. lists work because, uh, hey, there's a there's like a six to seven month waiting list to get on the podcast and people, oh, they really want on the podcast now. <laughs> That's right. kind of it works for us anyway. Genevieve, have you ever taken your kids to uh, Zubu? The Halloween event yes. at the zoo. Okay, yes, you know how there's vendors mm-hmm. that give out candy, yep. and some and and the kids stand in line right to get a candy from CPS, not Child Protective Services, from the <laughs> electric company, and from saws and those. Anyway, so I'm looking for my kids. They were a lot younger than they are now. It was ten years ago, and they're all standing in this really long line. I go, hey, what are y'all doing here? Oh, we're gonna get candies, really good candies. I go, okay, what are they giving out? Oh, wow, we don't know, but the line was the longest, so we just got in this line. So, yeah, I think it's, they, it they didn't go to any other ones that didn't have a line because they figured, yeah, they probably have crappy candy. 
So we're going to go in this line because they probably have chocolate. I think we're taught that in school. It's all about lining up. Get in line. Right, get in line. Fine line. But then where does the whole mindset come from standing in line for something that you perceive to be better? You know what I mean? Oh, there's a waiting list? Okay, I'm in on that. Group think? Yeah, group think, yeah. So psychological. Even with door-to-door sales, there would be a lot of areas that would say, oh, well, we service the majority of your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You just help people that, and they would say, okay, I'm fine. But if you, you know, I'm in. But if you told people like, well, you know, maybe we're new to this area, it was a lot harder to get a sale. But it's like that almost like a mob mentality, wherever that is, I want it. I've seen that with B&I in like VA staffing. It's like one and two, then three, then four, then five. Th- you know what I mean? It kind of like, it starts to accelerate because they're talking and it becomes more of a, of a thing. Popular. Yeah. Well, um, so yes, Billy, you should do marketing yeah. for yourself. <laughs> Told you I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> have that. <laughs> Well, yeah. Or you could hire Howie to do yeah, that. No, yeah, let me do your <laughs> marketing for you. No, the whole idea, and I'm happy to have a conversation offline with you. It, the time to advertise is when you don't need business, okay? Right. So you want to have a pipeline because what ends up happening is, let's say you advertise and it's very effective, and now you're attracting the ideal client. Then you start looking at your roster and you're like, you know what? This client's paying the old rate and they told me they're never going to pay a penny more than that. Maybe it's time to let them go and replace them with one of the new clients that's willing to pay the new rates who are on the same side of the table. This one complains a lot. This one only gave us or didn't give us a review. And then you start to right size. So you could still have the same amount of clients, but some of them will pay more. And some of them will be more fans than the ones you had from a long time ago. So there's also that whole thing about right-sizing. And then if you have clients or prospects on, in the wings, then as you scale your team, then all of a sudden you can handle that business. You know, So San Antonio had 23,000 people move to this city last year. That's more than any other city. These are people that maybe came from California or Seattle or wherever, and they don't have any contacts. They don't have a bookkeeper. They don't have a VA company. They don't have a branding company. They don't have a marketing company. They they don't have a plumber. And so you need to be marketing to these people. Plus they come with that West Coast money, you know, after selling their, you know, 1,200 square foot house for 1.8 million, they need something to spend. And some of them are bored. I have three of them on my street. One of them started a business, you know, it's like, ah, I thought I was going to retire. I'm only 61. I'm going to do something else. So he's starting a business. So he needs to start from scratch. So, Always be marketing. Yeah, I appreciate the. Yeah, I appreciate that, and that's why I like talking to. I mean, you've been doing this as long as I've been alive. So, uh, any type of wisdom, I'll take it. So, okay. I, well, I, that one was free. Okay, the <laughs> next one you charge for. <laughs> no. Okay, what was you called? The Let's Fix Your Business podcast. Yeah, the Let's yeah. Fix Your <laughs> Business podcast, and and we here we are. No, I appreciate that because yeah. I mean I'm always realistically right when it comes to business, trying to just figure it out. And, and so I love hearing wisdom from those um, that have been able to scale and already have it. And Genevieve it. knows we've collaborated on projects. I'd love to talk and collaborate with you really just all kidding aside. There's no charge to hang out and talk and uh, there'll be ways we can work together. There, there are uh, more than a hundred thousand registered businesses in Bear County. It took me 30 years to do business with 1500 of them. And that's assuming that the population doesn't change in terms of number of businesses. So it's not a total of 100,000 in 30 years. There's, there's probably been a million businesses. And if it took me that long to make one, do business with 1% at a given snapshot in time, I'm never going to live long enough to do business with it. So and it's saying? fun to work, in my opinion, it's fun to work with entrepreneurs. Oh, it it's is. fun to be around entrepreneurs. We think different. We got a little bit more of that hustle muscle, I think. Um, but well, let's let's yeah. get back to Google. So Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's get into the <laughs> SEO. We're talking He's been about waiting for this one. Yeah. So Google business profile, it's this thing that people th- may think it's easy and then they start doing it. It's not quite so easy, and there's the rules and there's things. Um, so, but you've got some tips and insight on getting that thing cleaned up. If somebody's going to start a business, they absolutely should do a Google business profile. What are the tips that you would say, Hey, start here and get this done. Yeah. I I think a lot of people too, they, they don't really even know what it is when starting a business and they just think Google's going to make one and be able to optimize it. So they really need to make sure that they own it themselves. Uh, and then that's a, a huge key, not having another agency say, I'll set it up and then they own it. You need to be able to own it yourself because that is a huge asset to your company. Uh, and then two, on top of that, uh, reviews are number one. And that seems so simple, but some businesses are just too busy, they seem. 
uh, to do it. Or if they get a review, uh, they never reply to it. Uh, but replying to the reviews are very important as well because as consumers are starting to do research, they go to your Google business profile, you see some reviews, and either uh, the replies are all the same and generic. It makes it seem like as a business, you don't really care for the individual client, right? You're just kind of like, all right, appreciate it, copy-paste. Or if you don't respond at all, it, it may seem like, again, you don't maybe care about the clients you have. So just doing that small thing and trying to get uh, as many reviews as possible is 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 huge. Uh, but then also many people don't realize that you can even post on your Google business profile uh, that Google loves. You can give updates, uh, specials, coupons. You can do so much on it and then link your social media. Uh, you can have your services. And some people will just put uh, general services. But most businesses, they have their ideal clients. You can really put be very specific on that so it can really be able to help uh, find your ideal client as well to be promoted on, on Google. So uh, there's so much to it. It seems simple, uh, but the beautiful part of it is if you take time to do it, it's also it's free. A business owner can do it themselves. Uh, they just need to actually take time to prioritize that. What's the rule on video? Because uh, look, I've struggled with the whole video thing. I put up videos. It's too big. It's too small. It's too long. It's too yeah. short. You're talking about the video for them to verify you, right? No, I'm talking about the video that I just want to put. I mean, obviously, we create a whole lot of content here on the podcast, and I want to put it up there. But every time I have tried, it's gotten like okay caught because up because there's something. also the verification video. Right, we'll get so, to that. We'll yeah, get to go that. ahead. We'll do his. Do you video know on video. like video? Just so in my experience, clip. anything over thirty seconds seems to not get. Uh, it seems to be taken down. So it's duration, it's, not file size. So I always try to do twenty nine seconds or less, and most of the time they seem to work. Google is finicky, and sometimes they'll just take something down, and there's no rhyme or reason. We're trying to figure that out, right? But for the most part, yeah, I'll try to stay to twenty nine seconds or less. What about aspect ratio? I mean, is sixteen to nine, or is it one to one? How should we be doing again? That? Really, haven't had any issues with different aspect ratios okay. uh, in my experience, but that 29 seconds is at least where I've found anything over that is where I've ran into to issues. And you're before. talking about Mark uploading it on the Google profile, just like a post, right? Just like a post. I'm mm -hmm. looking to put clips on there. That... I've never had issues where any of our reels for our clients was taken down or not accepted. Hmm. So that I'm curious to know what what's causing that delay. Have you done them you? over 30 seconds? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't yes, know. It's been a minute since I've events. done it, but... Yes. But I w initially, when I first started on radio, I was doing that, and it, it worked, and then it didn't work. So I mean, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, uh oh, maybe it's just the pro. Maybe it's your profile. I don't know. I yeah, guess that's could not be. Right. Yeah, you yeah. should try shaving, maybe, or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so what you reminded me though, um, and I've had clients that have had problems verifying their business. Oh yeah. And it used to be prior to whatever six months or a year ago. You didn't have to upload a video to verify your business. Now that you have to upload a video, some clients are having a lot of trouble with that where Google doesn't accept it, and it's the algorithm doing it. Do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, it used to be so simple, right? It was just a postcard in the mail, and you put the number right. in, and you got it. Uh, but it's nice that Google at least cracks down to make sure it's a verified business. Um, yeah, so Google will say anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, but it seems that, in my experience, again, uh, anything – uh, over a minute, Google doesn't seem to accept. So it seems like if you can keep the, that verification video in that 45 to 60 second sweet spot, okay. Google seems to like that better. And then you have to cram a whole bunch of information all in that, that simple or in that short amount of time. So uh, they usually like to see that you own that business. So a key to unlock the door. They want to gotcha. see a sign okay. by the road, even if it's a home business that you run from home, you can just order a little sign from Vistaprint, stick it in your front yard. Google seems to even be okay with that. But at least they see signage, your address. And then they also want to see that the business is run from that address that you're trying to verify. So uh, best is if you have maybe where you uh, verified your business with your EIN number and the address, you show that in the video. Uh, Google loves that or possibly some other type of important bill, like insurance, whatever it is, but having your business name with the address mm -hmm. you're trying to verify. So Google's just wanting to know, hey, this person isn't trying to scam us and pretend to have this. So just being able to give as much information in that 45 to 60 seconds that usually seems to go through. Okay. But they've made way more hoops to jump through now. Right. And how long does it take now for them to verify with the videos? Sometimes it can be within 10, 15 minutes, but usually sometimes they'll ask for a couple business days too. So it, 
it's Google. You think you got it figured out, and they always change something. Yeah. So it's a little up, up <laughs> in oh, the yeah. air for sure. Okay, you're going to use this opportunity to bash Google because I'm no, going to no. be the one to defend them. So, <laughs> but they're not sending the postcard thing anymore. Nope, not uh, anymore. Okay, well, I mean, I like that. It's faster. Uh, in, it's faster in, when it works. Yeah, when it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when exactly. you check your mail. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, I like all that. Uh, Howie, did you have anything else on the uh, Google Business Profile? Well, no, y- yes and no. Uh, so. It, Everything Billy said, 100% agree, super important. Um, What business owners need to know is that if they don't claim their Google listing, Google will set one up and it'll be unclaimed and people can leave bad reviews and all that stuff. And it's usually worse, Mm. you know, not to claim it. So I've had clients tell me, well, I didn't really claim my Yelp and I, because I don't, I, I don't really like Yelp. I've heard negative things about it. Guess what? You have a Yelp profile already. They already yeah. set one up, yeah. and I already looked at it, and you have three unanswered, decently bad reviews. So mm-hmm. claim it, clean it up, put your information, put your bio, put your quote as the owner, and then start responding to those. Then go find other clients to then give you positive reviews and push some of those down, get your average up. So ignoring it, sticking your head in the sand is not a good strategy. Exactly. And that's something you do for your clients, right, is you – Get their web listings we do. sorted. Yeah, we do. And we call it website or web, web-based web listings. But we have a strategy on which ones we go after. And then we tend to leave Google for the end. Uh, but but like Billy said, sometimes we like the client to do it on their own. Or we at least have them set up an email box that is at their URL. And then, and then we help them with it. Because, again, Google knows algorithms you know the 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 where you are gps wise what phone you're doing it from whose phone it is all that stuff and Mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is piss off google yeah Yeah. and you have to make sure that you like how he said you are verifying it because it's part of the bigger picture when you especially with seo with um, all this new technology that's happening is that you know when people do Google searches, these reviews are going to come up first and your pro- business profile is going to pop up. So if you're not claiming it, it makes you look very unprofessional and unpolished. So we got to make sure that those are claimed as soon as possible. Yeah, and having those reviews is like huge too. I mean, there's been studies that people uh, even like they, they view reviews almost as important as a referral oh, from a friend too. And everyone does research before they use a company now. So I- even if you have reviews, but they're three or four years old, I mean, can you really trust them? Things change like crazy, you know? So you're wanting to not only have a lot of reviews, but having them be updated and recent and having a co- consistency yeah. helps to really build trust with, with consumers. I, we already talked about how I need to do marketing for myself, but that's how usually people find us because we have a lot of good reviews on Google. It's just that pops up on its own and, and that really helps. So more yeah. businesses can focus on that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's perceived to be unbiased third party confirmation that you are a good business. Yeah. And people will tend to believe that's one of the reasons why I think the let's talk business podcast has grown to 28,000 subscribers on YouTube alone. And it's got millions of other views on social media is because people post positive things about being on the podcast about the connections they made through not only the podcast, but the mega mixers. And when people do that, it's verification. So it's not a hard sell when you go talk to other people, Hey, buy a ticket to come to the mega mixer or get in line, you know, and there's a three or four month waiting list to be on the podcast, uh, to be on it because it's valuable to your business. But like Genevieve said, it's just one aspect of it. And if you're going to be a business owner and you want to be a successful one, there are a lot of moving parts and you got to do them or your likelihood of success is greatly diminished. And I love word of mouth. We get a lot of word of mouth. Genevieve does too. Mark does too at Crocus, but Mm -hmm. you got to market and you have to have good reviews. Well, and so you mentioned social media and and I didn't know this over the weekend doing my homework. I actually went and then put my social media accounts into my Google profile now. Google business profile, because I didn't know you could do that. Um, but I like that. And social media is where people do their due diligence. They, mm-hmm. they want to see that you're relevant in the space. And like Genevieve is an example, a tremendous example of how well you're doing on social media, the content that you, you put up. Um, you know, that is a way for people to see that you're relevant in the space and it's timely. So if, you, if your last post was September 2023, 
right? They're going to be right. like, ah. <laughs> same thing exactly. with, same exactly. with exactly. blogs. Exactly. You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, we have a blog. And, and then I go on there, yeah. you know, it's for a metal roofing plan. I'm like, wait, August of 2012. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's a that's something that you should Tracks definitely up, not right. do on your blog is have it dated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unless you have somebody yeah. writing them for you every month. But, yeah, once a month is, is all you need to do. But on social media, you should have pictures of – that aren't just stock images of graphics and whatever. They they should be the people. That's what they should uh, be. Am, uh, yeah, and yeah. that's one of the downsides of AI as well. People are doing AI generated images and those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, but like, Google and all them, you they tell. know what's up. And you know, to your point as well, when it comes to networking, especially in different cities, uh, when I went up or different states actually, when I went up to New York, instead of handing out business cards, they say open up your Instagram. They wanted to take a look, and then this is how they're going to connect. So instead of giving phone numbers, I'll connect with you on Instagram. So the way that they did business there was very different from what I'm used to here. So I learned a lot from there, and they're looking to see how involved are you in your community? What are you doing to give back with your business, through your business, and also as an individual? And that's how some of these connections were made, which I thought was absolutely incredible because you can pass out a business card and they can go to your website, but when they actually see what your company has been doing, that actually resonates a little bit more with them. For sure. Yeah, and that's back to the Let's Talk Business Mixer is like because we are involved in the community. We are giving mm -hmm. back to the community, and we are all over social media. That is a content one of my goals for the Let's Talk Business Mixer was to be a content generating machine, which professional photography, videography, it totally was. There's all content. The I, everyone had their phones out, and then you had. I mean, y'all provided it, but then I mean, everyone was taking pictures and posting themselves. I mean, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the goal. Yeah. Margarita in one hand, phone in the other. Mm -hmm. The mar hey, what's margarita. Up? Margarita. All right. So, anything else on the Google Business Profile you think that people need to pay attention to? I think just going along with the social media. It, I've heard some people say the Google Business Profile is a so, is social media, and others say it's not. I'm gonna just stay right in the middle on that. But it is nice that you can take a lot of the content that you post on Instagram, Facebook, and post that on, you know, your Google Business Profile. Not only with just pictures, but there's actually like a section where you can give updates and posts. And content's king. Yeah. So the more you can get it out there and put especially, it on Google is great. Right, especially events. People don't Definitely. use the events tab on Google Business Profile. That's so crucial. That's the first time hearing about it now. Yeah. Yes, I didn't there's even an know. event tab. Yeah, I, I didn't know there was an events tab, but yes. I found out two years ago that there was an events tab on LinkedIn. And so we started putting in Gotcha oh. Covered as an event on LinkedIn. And then business people show up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, it's, and it's free. <laughs> I mean, yeah. utilize it. And, you know, so what we do is the content that we're posting on our client social media, we put it on their Google business profile, too. So <clears throat> I have something to add, even though you didn't ask me. Yes, Billy. <laughs> but I have a client who, well, no, prospect who says we got it. We gave her a proposal. And then she says, I'm going to table it for now, because I spend the first two hours of my day, my business day, doing all the social media and web listings and all that. And I've been doing that for more than a year. So I, I went on to their social. They have very few followers, very few um, engagements. And some of their listings were set up wrong. So their hours of operation were not mm. either not existent or they didn't match up. And so, you know, I, I wanted to go back to tell her, but I don't want to make it seem like a sales pitch because now I'm trying too hard, right? If, if your business, and I asked her, is your business where you want it to be? They said, no, we have excess capacity. I mean, we have a couple of vans and a couple of drivers and whatever, and, and sometimes they're just sitting idle. That's why I spend more than, sometimes more than two hours medium she should be paying somebody like the evolve firm or billy here to uh, grow marketing to be doing that for her because the opportunity cost of her not spending two hours in her business is a lot more expensive than what she would be paying somebody to do that well, but some people her. think that because i'm busy yeah i'm productive right and those two things don't equate right and if you don't have the results then you have to be truthful and say, hey, 
either I don't know my shit or this thing is not working. I need to hire a professional. So I always uh, I tell my kids, you judge a tree by the fruit it bears. If you buy a fig tree and you water it and you fertilize it, it better bring back figs because if a year from now it has no figs and it's gigantic and provides a lot of shade and it's symmetrical and you go back to Home Depot or wherever you got the tree, you're like, hey, I bought this tree last year. I did everything you all said and I still don't have pig figs. And then they say, yeah, but look how awesome the tree looks. Do you want to swing for that? Because now the branch is big enough for swing. No, if I wanted a swing tree, I would have bought a swing tree, but I wanted a fig tree. So what are the results you want to get from social media? It's more business. You want calls, you know? And I, th- I don't think people judge themselves that way. Mm-mm. I agree. All right, so let's switch over to Google Gemini, which I actually, I'm excited about Google Gemini since they, you know, it's become more of a feature. I, at least I see it on my search now. If I go in and I'm searching for, you know, a place to eat here in San Antonio, then it can give me a little bit more direction there. And I know they're going to grow that out even further. So, Billy, w- what are your thoughts on where Google Gemini is now and where they're planning on going in the near future? Yeah, I'm excited about it because I feel like it just makes things easier in general, right? You like can ask Google a question and now it just gives you the answer instead of me having to read a, a website. So actually Google uh, just released uh, an update on uh, Thursday of uh, what they're launching with Google Gemini. And they're, they said they've officially launched their product aspect of Google ads now within Gemini. So the example that they actually gave to was you could type in how to get grass stains out of my jeans and it would tell you exactly, Gemini would say, okay, this is the process to do it. This is how you get it out. But here's also some products that will help you. Here's Tide, here's Shout, here's that will be able to help you get out that grass stain. So that is going to definitely impact uh, the Google ads and being able to uh, help push products. In that same uh, update, it said services will be coming soon too. Uh, and you know Google sometimes they don't necessarily give ton they don't they don't really like they keep their cards pretty close to their their vest on on some things with that so I'm excited and trying to keep more up to date with that unless may, maybe Howie or Genevieve have the inside scoop on on that a little bit more but when it comes to to the products and Gemini I'm I'm super excited about it yeah so be keeping yourself relative or relevant as a local business is going to be important like say a restaurant for example if you're a vegan restaurant that also does A B and C then and somebody wants hey i want a vegan restaurant that also has chicken you know what i mean that that so my husband can eat or or whatever that when they google that they're going to get an answer and they're going to get specific things that are based on what you have on your website what you have on your social media it's an aggregate place they figure out are you relevant are you popular do you have the services but they put all that right in front of you which i think is tremendous i love it it's going to make it so much easier for consumers. And it just shows, too, how important that SEO is, too, to be able to have that content that Gemini could then pull from to be able to give to the consumers as as a answer to their question or their search query. So um, I think it's going to be uh, really impactful. And, I mean, AI has been around. It's been part of you know Google Ads for years already. But this whole aspect of it is going to continue to update and I think really change the way consumers search. And I think, too, that podcast content is going to become increasingly more valuable because it is the owner or its people that are creating real content, not AI content, but it it covers the spectrum of text because it's, you know, there's obviously transcripts and then um, image video and then audio. So it's like, it's a really good way to generate content to keep yourself relevant and talk about these things because it can quickly pull a transcript on what you're talking about that you're making yourself relevant and then feed that into the algorithm. So what do you think, Genevieve? I am kind of curious on this new feature too, how much the Google ad packages are going to change as well financially, because yes, it will pull, you know, organically those products and services. But of course, you know, that Google ads will always get that placement first. So now how competitive is it going to be for business owners? And how much more money will they have to budget uh, with this new rollout? That's what I'm kind of curious about. Yeah. <clears throat> Google ads, people will tell you, oh, they don't really work. They obviously are working because so many people are doing it. And and Google makes you know billions of dollars off of it. Okay. But businesses 
are going to have to rethink how they market. But just like Billy said, that AI is pulling from the content you're putting out there. It's also pulling from reviews. It's also pulling from podcasts. It's pulling from everywhere you're, there's information about your company. Now, the question then becomes, since Google can read your emails, especially if they're Gmail, and you're doing business with somebody and they're replying back to you on something they didn't like or there was some problem, are they including that data? Now, I'll tell you that I think Google is probably not pulling that data now. Um, I will tell you that insurance companies like USAA could in the future, if not already, buy that information. And if they're aggregating information from your teenage kid, racing your Camaro on the highway, it might affect your insurance rate or you might get dropped. So everything you put out, whether you think it's public or not, is going to be indexed and sold or used by somebody, number one. Number two, if you only worry about what's front-facing and what you can pay for and what you think you can control, you're really leaving a lot of opportunity um, off the table that you could maybe not control and pay for. But if you keep a great reputation online, keep your politics off of your social media, especially your business pages and all those things, you're generally going to do better algorithmically. And I think that Gemini and other AI will, will eventually start to filter out AI-generated content for a business and go directly to that real source, real humans. They really were at this mega mixer. They really did interact. They really did do business together. And I think you're going to start to see more reviews not showing up when they're not real reviews of real customers. Or they could be real humans, but they were not a real customer of that law firm or that or, or that, uh, you know, uh, a landscaper or whatever. That's full circle. So we're, we're getting to the point where there's a lot of noise out there mm -hmm. on social media that's artificial content. I don't know how many social media accounts that I've seen, because usually when somebody's going to come on the show, I go check out your social media. What do you got on your business page? And, and nine times, nine and a half times out of ten, it's really nothing of the business owner or nothing. like. It's just it's graphic content that doesn't really mean anything, right? But... That is an example of what AI is going to be able to filter out. It's going to filter out. It's not going to suggest websites or social media that doesn't have any authentic content on it. Like, my website has all authentic content. Well, I guess there's some stock images there with, like, uh, VA stuff. But I'd say 90% of it is authentic content. So where do you see that going? Yeah, I, I, I've heard so many times, too, like, especially in the marketing agency, like, if you don't beat AI, you're going to be out of a job. Maybe this is controversial, but I don't necessarily believe that. I think AI is a great tool and a great asset. However, like you said, I mean, Google is going to, especially in general, this all this AI content is going to not be prioritized. So you're going to still need that human interaction with a lot of it. And again, back to reviews, I mean, that's just going to be huge because they know this is an actual person that interacted with this business and gave an actual... Uh, overview of what it was like working for them. So when it comes to content in general, I mean, content is king. That's always what it is. But I think actual human content, that is what is king. AI can help. But even in the long run, I mean, AI could be helpful, but we really do need to, I, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, but I'm not scared of my job for that aspect of it. I look to use AI and be able to really uh, accelerate things. But at the same time, I mean, we're not going away. Well, it's good that you're picking a side. I pick the same side. It's a tool, not something to threaten your business. But we don't know. Six months from now, things might change, right? Gemini 3.0, whatever they it is. They start calling it Skynet. I think right. we're going to have a problem. <laughs> That's oh, right. No. Yeah. So, so but, but, but make a decision, leverage it, use it, go with it. And if you have to, be adaptable because things will change in the marketplace. But again... Back to ignoring it. I ignoring anything, generally, not a good idea. Yes, and so, absolutely. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. But talking about content, again, it's knowing that all these pieces of the puzzle all work together. And ignoring one piece might 
actually hurt you in the long run. So ignoring the social media piece, um, but still doing the SEO and the reviews and, you know, all these things work together. And that's what's going to help run your business, you know, even while you're sleeping. And that's why it's important to have these systems in place and work with individuals like everybody here at this table because then it allows a business older, uh, owner to be able to step back and let these resources work as well if they're being used properly. Yeah, the, I like the puzzle piece analogy because without with a missing piece, right. you don't complete the puzzle. Yep. And so it's not to say you should take a shotgun approach and spend all kinds of money on every form of marketing there is. But you have to be present at least everywhere your customer is or your prospect is because there are people that only live on social media. And if you ignore social media, you're never going to hit them. There are some people that are only on Google. There are some people that refuse to be on Google that will only be on Bing because they hate Google or whatever it is. And, and you might take out some Bing ads. Yes, it might be a smaller percentage of the population, whatever it happens to be. But again, don't leave opportunities on, by the wayside and just show up. And if it doesn't work, fantastic. Then you can discard it and then revisit it maybe a year later and see what happens. But there, there's people, my kids... I pay 200 and something dollars a month for cable, okay? I like watching Judge Judy and whatever else is on cable, okay? But they don't have, they don't, they never turn on the cable box. They go directly to streaming. And so if you want to reach a teenage audience, you're going to have to stream yep. and pay for advertising on Hulu and on Netflix and whatever else or Amazon. That's like a whole ecosystem. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, you focus on one area, but there's so many things that you miss out on. So you got to make sure you hit everything. And back to AI, too, on that aspect of it. I mean, I think earlier we were talking, Howie, on just in 30 years, how much you've seen things change. And so many things continue to come out. And this is just the next thing to adapt to and use as a tool, the next thing to jump on. And so I, I think, like you said, we're, we're taking a side. I'm not necessarily threatened by it, but I'm excited by it. And it's like, okay, how is this going to be able to enhance? not only my business, but how can it enhance the service that we offer in helping other businesses? Too. Yeah, think so. about the bell curve, right? Most people are in the middle and then there's a lot of laggards. If you're an innovator and you learn it early, guess what? When everybody jumps on board, you're already there. You're now an expert, mm -hmm. right? But if you just wait and see what happens, yeah, it might be left behind. You know, what's interesting is let's bring this full circle back to networking too. Networking has been around forever you know, and it's still a huge component of the way business gets done today. Uh, now, these, you know, Google, very relevant. People are going to do their due diligence and check you out and all the things. So it's all good, but still networking, to your point earlier, um, and of course how we do a lot of our business is, is through networking. So it's still very relevant. You can still make a living doing that, but really you do have to pay attention to these technologies that are out and about um, to stay relevant, I guess. Uh, Billy, if as we're wrapping up, is uh, if folks want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh, well, they can call me directly, uh, and my number is two one zero eight six zero zero four nine nine, or our website is growmarketingservices.com. dot com. So that's probably the the best two ways. You can always find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, but phone number and an email, uh, phone number and a website are our best bet. Are you guys on YouTube as well? We are not. Okay, not yet. I mean, maybe you can link us on the podcast. I don't know. No, right. yeah, not, not, not yet. Not we'll, yet. We'll back link. We we always do uh, for the website anyway. Yeah, we'll thank back you. link anyway. And if uh, people want to send you a fax, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Clay tablet. We're back to that. AI fax. <laughs> yeah, my palm. Let me get my palm pilot out. Well, Billy, thanks for coming. I appreciate that. I think we had a great dis discussion over a couple of topics. Um, so thanks again for coming in. Um, as we wrap up me. the show, a quick reminder to check out our latest podcast and catch a video version of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's going to be it for this one. Make sure you guys are following us on social media. Catch those clips of the uh, mega mixer that was that happened. If you're in the San Antonio area, keep an eye out for the next one because they are a great way to do business. That's going to be it for this one. You guys have a great week. We'll see you on the next one.